Welcome to Focus Washington. I'm Chuck Conconi, and my guest today is John James, founder and chairman of J.D. James & Company, an advisory firm serving governments, government-sponsored enterprises, and the global private sector in Central Africa. He has lived and worked in Africa for more than 10 years. John, thank you for coming and being on Focus Washington. Today. Well, it's a pleasure being with you, Chuck. Thank you. I'd like to talk a little bit in this session we're doing on Equatorial Guinea. What is the government doing there to make investing there more attractive? Well, of course, uh, Equatorial Guinea is, is perhaps one of the most dynamic stories in Africa and certainly in Central Africa today. Um, just in the last 15 to 20 years, they've experienced a tremendous boom in um, oil production. And uh, the process of converting that into development has been a major task that they've been focused on. But what about a bureaucracy there? What's it like to establish business? I mean, practically, to establish business in Equatorial Guinea? Well, interestingly, as a small country, you have a lot more flexibility than you would in most other places. And because the focus of the government is so much on development, uh, being able to negotiate with incoming businesses is a very flexible and typically a very friendly process. Specifically, for example, although they have a tax regime, which is similar to that in the United States, as a new company, they are willing to give you, for example, a tax holiday on income taxes for as long as 5, 10, 15 years, depending on the type of industry. So flexibility is the watchword. So development has been growing there, in, but how would you compare Equatorial Guinea with other African countries in the terms of investment again? Well, of course, uh, as an advisory firm that serves all of Central Africa, we operate from Cameroon to Angola. I don't want to single out an individual country as my favorite, but um, I would have to say that uh, both the business climate and the people have been very, very friendly. Uh, we've seen no problems with any of the American companies and just about every major American company uh, that there is is either there or wants to go there and I've never heard one complaint. Well then you would recommend it to American companies, oh, uh, companies abroad. I would strongly recommend it to them and uh, the advantage of course is they're working with really a clean slate because uh, this is really a new process for them uh, development is something that uh, has only really been underway for about 10 to 12 years and they need almost everything. They need technical support, they need training of their local workers, they've been very aggressive in getting outsiders to come in and help them. So whether it's consumer goods, natural resources, services, infrastructure, all of that's on the table in terms of American business. Well, it, it what comes is a question, you, you raised part of it in your answer, says what is it like for the workforce there? Are there well, qualified workers available? I mean, if I were oh. a major American corporation and wanted to invest, that would be something I would have in mind. Well, uh, the government, for example, has been investing tremendous amounts of money in education. And remember, they're starting from a very, very low base point. So um, if you're asking, are you going to be able to get a Harvard-trained lawyer uh, there's really only one in the country, and uh, he's a wonderful one. Um, so depending on the, the qualitative needs of the company, you may have some difficulty, but that process is ongoing and it's continuously changing. So it's improving. Oh, absolutely. What are the objectives of the Equatorial Guinea government uh, to improve economic conditions there? Well, of course, the head of state, President Obiang, has specifically said in his Vision 2020, that his number one focus is to improve the standard of living for the entire country. And as you know, in Equatorial Guinea, there's an offshore island, which is where the capital is located, and then you have the mainland, where roughly 70% of the population is. And that balancing act of developing both parts has been a difficult one, but he is doing everything, and his government, of course, that they possibly can to make sure that there's an even distribution of the benefits of the oil. We have time for one quick last question. How is business activity funded there? What is the currency, banking, repatriation? No problems with repatriation whatsoever. Equatorial Guinea is a member of what's known as CMAC, which is the Francophone Central Africa uh, currency grouping. They use what's called the CFA franc, which is pegged to the euro. Um, so obviously uh, transactions are, can be done in the CFA, the euro, or the dollar. 
And uh, the bulk of the industries that are in Equatorial Guinea are in fact American companies. We have more than 25,000 American workers in Equatorial Guinea today. John, thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry we have to quit now, but I hope you'll come again. Thanks so much, a pleasure. I'm Chuck Conconey, and this has been Focus Washington.